back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time. And it's in! An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back! And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level. It's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Well, good afternoon and welcome to BS3. It's Seven Sides Derby Day this afternoon, one of the fiercest battles in British football. And let me tell you, the atmosphere is palpable outside, very exciting indeed. Two sides are, of course, languishing towards the bottom of the championship table as it stands, but starting to show signs of improvement. Hopefully, Bristol City can get back to winning ways following defeat at Craven Cottage last weekend. Massive encounter today, and here to watch it all alongside me is the development phase coach Ali Hines. Ali, welcome along. Uh, as players, when you, when you love the game in the same way as us fans do, what does it mean to, to get an opportunity to play in a game like today and then really make a name for yourself as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's, it's such an important game today as well. I think the players will be right up for it, individuals as well as a team. Um, and like you said, making, making your name on a day like this will live in the fans' hearts forever. Absolutely. And it's been the away side that's come out on top in the last five away fixtures between these sides, as we know from that Andy Vyman uh, double at uh, the Cardiff City Stadium earlier on this season. What do Bristol City need to do today to, to send those away fans back to, to Cardiff feeling a bit disgruntled? I think it's, it's carrying what we're doing. Um, continue with a high intensity, scoring goals, which we're doing well now. Um, obviously, out of possession, we need to you know, get better, um, you know, keeping clean sheets, limiting chances, stopping crosses in our box um, and dealing with a direct play. And, it's, and it has been a, a case of not keeping clean sheets for both of these sides, really. Bristol City, I think, have three now, but Cardiff actually haven't picked up a, a clean sheet all season uh, as it stands. So it's really about tightening things up at the back for both sides. We obviously shipped six last weekend. Mm. Whilst we looked good in, in an attacking sense, uh, what, what does that back five it looks as though need to do today? I think they, they've got to stay compact, the distances have to be correct at times with the communication across the line, um, but every player out of possession has to defend, they've all got roles and responsibilities to do, um, and the, the manager and the coaching staff have worked hard on it this week. And it, it was funny coming into to the ground a few moments ago, you know the tension outside is palpable, it's funny because the players actually arrive um, via the Atio stand and there's a lot of Cardiff fans down there, it's, it looked as though the City players were sort of turning up for an away game. You walked in just behind me as yeah. well, and uh, it really is tense outside. You know, both these sides have, have struggled throughout the season. The fans have had to watch football that you know we've struggled with at times. It's a really big occasion today. It's a massive occasion, and the players and the staff obviously know that. Um, and I think with the Cardiff fans outside the the players' entrance when they come in, I think it adds fuel to our fire. Really gives the players a you know a big lift, and they'll they'll produce it on the pitch. Well, let's have a look at the sides that will go toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe today. We'll start with Cardiff City, the away side. Uh, Morrison, who is now, of course, in charge for the remainder of the season following Mick McCarthy's departure, is in dire need of a win. They've not won since uh, November, are winless in five. Two changes for their 11 today, and they come across midfield. Marlon Pack returns to the 11 on his return to Ashton Gate. He replaces Ryan Wintle in the middle of a three. Uh, to his right, he'll have the new signing, Tommy Doyle, who's this week joined the club on loan from Manchester City. Evidently, uh, already making an impression in training. He replaces Will Vaux, but the danger man is on the other side of pack. Joe Rules has uh, five assists in his last six games. Aidan Flint, as you'll see there, uh, lines up as part of a back five as well, uh, that of course hasn't kept a clean sheet all of this season. And a youthful bench as well today with Republic of Ireland international Joel uh, Bagan and Isaac Davies uh, with a smattering of experience too in there with uh, Sean Morrison among the substitutes. As for Bristol City, well, who's got the nod for the biggest game of the season so far? It's two changes, and it was predicted by a lot of City fans online. Atkinson and Chris Martin come in. That means Jada Silva and Zach Viner miss out. Uh, you'd imagine the back five will remain uh, with Pring, Atkinson and Callas as a three. Wingbacks uh, Scott and Odada will be busy down the flanks trying to expose uh, the Cardiff fullbacks Perry, NG and Drame. Uh, up front, Chris Martin comes in to partner Antoine Semenyo with Andy Vyman, the hero, of course, of the derby earlier on this season. Uh, and the headline news comes from the bench. Uh, Joe Williams is back. 
So what will it mean? Uh, will he get an opportunity off the bench uh, today? Tommy Conway and Eamon Benarous too, but no Matty James in the squad today. He is out, unfortunately, injured. Right, so let's hear from the man that picked today's side. It's Nigel Pearson with Robins TV. Nigel, seven side derby day, more than 21,000 fans in here today. What kind of occasion is it going to be? Well, it'll be a very competitive game. There are a few backstories, there are ex players. There are, yeah, we obviously got a very good result at their place early in the season. Um, so I would expect it to be a very hard fought game in which we will need to show some real um, drive and character. But I also expect us to be able to play our football too. So, as in any game, you have to, you have to really um, earn the right to do that. And uh, today will be a really tough game. You've talked before about the fans getting us yeah. over the line and getting those wins. How cute could they be today? They'll be very, very important. As I said the other day, they've been, they have been behind us all season. They've had to endure some difficult times. Days like today are when we can pay them back, and that is by putting on a performance uh, and getting a result which will be enjoyed by them. Um, but I'm under no illusions. It will be a tough game for us. And how important will it be for the players Obviously, a lot of supporters in. They need to manage the occasion, manage the emotion of that. They do, and that's one of the most important things in derbies, is to um, be able to perform under pressure. That's what it's always about. But uh, players should always look forward to these big games. Two changes today, you brought Chris Martin and Rob Atkinson yeah. back. Talk us through your thinking on this. Yeah, we just need to freshen up. And um, I think Chris, when he went on a sub last week, showed... Uh, showed some good touches, uh, gives us the option of, of um, a, a better aerial threat. Um, so, and, and I thought Rob, you know, Rob, Rob's had a bit of a... And he uh, speaks of aerial threat there that, that Chris Martin will be able to help Bristol City deal with both defensively and going forward. When you've got the likes of uh, Aidan Flint in there coming up for corners, it'll be important that him and Atkinson are, are on their game today defensively. Massively. Um, and you hope that the Bristol City's first action in the game is a big header, big tackle. Dealing with them, uh, you can block them, got to stop them running, get in clean contact on the ball. I think bringing Chris Martin back into the team offers that aerial presence for us as well. And very different player to Semenyo and, and Vyman. He actually adds that sort of air of calm as well and in those tight spaces as we saw against uh, the, P the the winner at Peterborough for example mm. he just adds that sort of touch of quality in the final third yeah he, he can score goals he can hold it up um, and that means we can play into him today relieve a bit of pressure and get us up the pitch so yeah he's a, he's a good player and hopefully he can score some goals today and surely Aidan Flint must be sort of a bit nervous ahead of kickoff today when you've got Semenyo the way he performed obviously he wasn't in the game huge amounts against Fulham mm. but when he did get his opportunities he obviously took them and, and the way he accelerated away from Harrison Reed, I think it was for the second goal just shows the, the power and, and, and pace he does have and he, he's coupled that now with that composure in front of goal That's right, I think Anton's he, he's, his numbers are great now, he's scoring goals he's a threat, he's a threat all over the pitch so I think the Cardiff backline will look at that and maybe they might drop a little bit to try and allow for his pace, which would be good because then Anton will be able to get and turn at them and drive at them and slip other players in. So he will cause them problems today and hopefully affect their back line. And Alex Scott, of course, has played in a slightly more advanced role. We certainly did against uh, Fulham. We'll be back at right wing back, we think, today. Mm -hmm. Will that be frustrating for Nigel Pearson that he has to, to drop him back into that position with the absence of George Tanner? I think the manager will, you know, he'll play pl good players anywhere across the park, which is great to see. So for Alex, I think Alex will go on and, and he's played a, quite a few games in that position. And I think obviously the gaffer's seen that and trusts him in that position. So it'd be good. I think wherever Alex plays on the pitch, as everyone's seen before, he's a, he's a good player, he can handle it. Fingers crossed. Right, now it's a, it's a campaign that has rightly captured the thinking of so many football fans in recent months. And now we can proudly say that Bristol City are partnering with Her Game 2 and pitch side with more, it's Dowsey.
Great stuff. Yes, thank you very much, Toby. And yeah, her game too is a really supportive and positive change for women's football. That is what they are campaigning for. Her game too, a group of female Bristol City supporters uh, who are very passionate about football and want to eradicate sexism in the football industry. They want all women of all ages uh, to be feeling comfortable, not only at football games, but also online with their comments, etc., and in uh, real life without sexist uh, abuse or fear of it anyway and joining me now are co-founders uh, Eve and Leah. Eve, uh, Eve I'll start with you. Um, first of all how important is it that women feel comfortable in the football environs? Yeah that's the uh, the main aim that we're, we're hoping to achieve. Um, we've come an incredibly long way over the the last few years um, but we still do see sexism whether it's on match day or online um, and we want to make sure that it's an inclusive as inclusive experience for everybody um, from little girls all the way up to old ladies um, we want to make sure that everyone feels represented um, and feels safe coming to the game there is no doubt that there is a huge amount of female supporters you know football really is for everybody it was seen perhaps historically as a, as a man's sport but you look around the stadium today and football really is for everyone isn't it yeah, definitely. Um, the, I think it's so much more popular now than when we were younger. Um, so many more girls are playing, which is wonderful. And when they're playing, they've got those role models, so they're more likely to come here and enjoy the experience. Um, we've welcomed so many girls and local teams as well today, which we're really proud about, really excited to see in the stands. Um, so we are, we're very glad with how far it has come, but um, there's still more work to be done to make sure that um, we can try and get more and more girls into the game. And Leah, it all started off with a viral video. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, Kaz, our founder, basically sent a message to all of the female fans she sort of knew um, on Twitter. Um, we sort of formed a bit of an alliance um, against sexism, really, because we'd all experienced it in some way or form, sadly. Um, you know, the typical get back into the kitchen comment and your opinion isn't valid because you're a girl, that kind of thing, um, which almost became a bit of normality, really, and it shouldn't be, you know? Um, so we just thought, let's do something positive about it. Um, so we did a video online which reached 1.8 million followers, um, with, not followers, sorry, views, which is fantastic. Um, and since then it's been going more bigger and bigger, but for a positive change, um, just trying to create something positive out of it. Women are, you know, as much um, valued in the game and as much welcome in the game as everyone else. And I just think it's a really fantastic movement that is growing and growing and the amount of comments we've had from little girls and parents and even girls who play football and just said, you know, what, you, what you're doing is amazing. Um, we're going to get my club signed up for this. You know, whether it's a grassroots team or a team like Everton who partnered with us recently, every partnership means the same. And we almost want it to be, in, you know, like kick it out is for racism. It's everywhere, right? Every club supports it. We want it to be like that, really. Every club is behind her game too because they're, they're against sexism in football and they want everyone to enjoy it. You. Now, um, Eve, how can people get involved and what are the socials? How can we follow you up? How can we follow the progress of this campaign? Um, so you can find us on Twitter and on Instagram at HerGame2 um, and also we're on Facebook and just um, have a look at what we're doing with different clubs. Um, we've got lots out. Um, Sky Sports did a story on us this week which was insane, amazing. Um, so hopefully you'll see us cropping up more and more. Um, but they're the socials that you can give us a follow on and just track what we're doing. And finally, score prediction for today? Oh, God. 3-2 um, City. 2-0 <laughs> City. Yes, both emphatic City wins. Eve and Leah, thank you so much. Her game, too. You can read all about it on the Bristol City website, too, at bcfc.co.uk. Toby, back to you. Eve, Leah, Downsy, thank you very much. Right, not long to go now until kick-off. We're going to hear from those in the game that this derby means so much to after this short break.
Welcome back to Robins TV. Seven side derby day. Fixtures do not get much bigger than this and we're just under 15 minutes now until kickoff. I'm still joined here on uh, Robins TV by uh, Ali Hines and now we're going to talk a bit to you about uh, a chance to win a very exciting prize today. Uh, if you're taking part in the 50-50 match day draw, uh, we've got this uh, signed picture of Scott Murray uh, to win, created by uh, former Bristol City assistant head coach uh, John Gorman. All tickets are £1. You can also uh, win £1,000 as part of the draw as well. Uh, so if you want to win this uh, fantastic picture of, uh, of Scotty, which uh, oh, Ali yeah. is... Uh, Nicely holding there up on Robin's TV. Uh, you can head online now uh, to bcsc.co.uk. Head to the Robin's Foundation page uh, for all of the details as well. And you could be winning this uh, fantastic prize. Scotty doesn't look too bad there as well. And hopefully we see more of those uh, scenes today, Ali. He actually looks better in, on this than in real life. So I'm, I'm impressed, I'm very <laughs> impressed. Absolutely, right. Time uh, uh, to, to look uh, ahead now of to, to, to kick off. Uh, and fixtures like this are so often ferocious. So let's relive some of the classic goals uh, against Cardiff from years gone by. He seems to have run out of space, and surely he couldn't score from there, but he does. Scott Murray, he's got the pace to really threaten, and to score the equalising goal. Seventh goal of the season for Scott Murray. again to the danger man Scott Murray. So it's coming from him. He scored again. Two goals in as many minutes for Scott Murray. Bristol City claim a dramatic lead. Some uh, cracking goals in there. We saw Mickey Bell strike at the start of that uh, VT there. Ali, any favourite um, derby memories for you? I think every derby win is one of my favourites, but but Scotty's goals, a special place in my heart with that celebration. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this game uh, carries huge significance, uh, so more so, so than ever today. And these uh, sides battling, of course, for, for every point. So let's find out what this game means to those associated with Bristol City. It's 90 minutes of uh, sweat, blood, everything. Well, it is the derby, as and has been for like the last 20 years. Um, as a fan and as SLO, you look forward to that game because of the, the, the celebrations when you win. The bragging rights are always good, and I think, I think even more so now with, with social media, it's, uh, it kicks off quite a bit, which is fun. So I think, uh, no, it's, it's always one of the games you want to win. So it is emotional, to be honest, and it's one of them where this season it's been probably a little bit harder than I expected in terms of trying to sort of park the support side of it, you know, your family asking you questions about the club and things like that and concentrate on the professional, you know, you're a player for the club and, and you have to be professional and, and sort of put the emotional side of it to, to one side. It's obviously a big game for, for the club, for the fans and, and everyone associated with Bristol City. Um, and I've played in a few now so I, I've got a taste of what they're like and I can't wait to play in, in the next one. 
I have not had any backhanders on this, but it's got to be Scotty. It's got to be Scotty's game. Um, yeah, Ninian Park, the, the two stadia are different. Ninian Park, it was much more atmospheric. You were stood up. Um, there was a, the, the, the whole day was amazing. Do you know what I mean? The, 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 the winning goals and Scotty doing his legendary run. The adrenaline was pumping for every single City fan that day. And I don't think any of us will ever forget that. Well, this has got to be that one. The game at, at Ninian Park, I think, uh, the two goals and the... It was, it, we always used to have good, good banter at Ninian Park and, and they'd probably say the same, I think, before Ashton Gate got um, upgraded. I think um, the, the atmosphere on both grounds are probably pretty intimidating for the, the away team. So I think uh, it's, it, it's one of them things, a, a couple of goals and we've had a few a few uh, good results against them, so I think um, it's, um, it's one game that, you, as I said, you always look forward to, to winning, hopefully. Great, obviously the, the one, we had the one when there was no fans there and that was annoying for them to not be there, but we also felt the, the support online and stuff and obviously in the stadium it was, it was great to, to win that game. Um, and then obviously the one more recently this year, away from home, which was just Unbelievable to, to see all the fans there shout, screaming and shouting the whole game and <clears throat> Andy scoring those goals and yeah, it was just an amazing, amazing occasion for us and, and it was a great game and obviously we got the three points. A win's a win at the end of the day, I think, um, I think any footballer, the main, the main thing on a Saturday quarter to five is, is the three points and I think um, it doesn't matter if it was 20 years ago or, or, or Saturday, so I think uh, a win's a win and, and they all taste as sweet as, as the last one. I think as, as, a, as a professional player, you know, you have to deal with all sorts of pressure throughout the season anyway. Um, like I keep saying, it's just down to us to make sure that we don't let the, the occasion get the better of us. You know, we know it's a big game. Um, like I say, we're in similar positions in the league and, and we want to get the better of them on the day. So, you know, we have to, we have to deal with that. It's, it's part and parcel of the job. And, and like I keep saying, you know, Saturday lunchtime, we'll, we'll be ready for the game. Yeah, I love it. I like the fact that there's going to be a big crowd. The atmosphere will be amazing. The singing section will be in full voice. Yeah, I like the banter. I like the England-Wales banter as long as it's within reason. I think that adds to it. I don't think that makes... I think that makes it better. You know, I think... Yeah, I think it's something we all look forward to and, and as long as you win. <laughs> Some uh, fond memories uh, there. And Bristol City fans, really, Ali, have been sort of starved of big occasions this season, really. We can see on the screen behind us the singing section there away at the South Stand, already in, in fine voice. Mm. They'll be really up for this today. And it will it'll spur those players on as well. Massively. And I think the players need the fans to, to get behind them as well. So, you know, the atmosphere that the fans can create at this game would be fantastic and hopefully get us across the line and get us three points. Well, the nerves are there, absolutely. So, just finally, where can, where can Bristol City really hurt and, and punish Cardiff City today? I think, I think we can definitely continue our philosophy the way we play. Uh, and I think if everyone can deal with their roles and responsibilities, and you know, I think we can punish them on the break quite easily. But it's all about us today. We're at home. I think we go out and make our mark on Cardiff. Yeah, absolutely, and they'll hopefully come flying out the traps. If you had to put a score on it and a, and a goal scorer, perhaps as well. Uh, one nil Bristol City and Anton. Fingers, goal. fingers crossed. Right, remember you can still grab your match day pass today both domestically and overseas at robins.bcfc.co.uk but it's at this point we say goodbye to those of you that are watching our pre-match show on YouTube and Facebook. 